Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Active Directory Federation Services. And in this video, we are going to talk about the installation process of remote access role that will help you to get a server configured as ADFS proxy. Now, if you're following this playlist uh, from the beginning, what we have covered in our last video is the theoretical part of ADFS proxy and where you must place ADFS proxy server in your network. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the installation process of ADFS proxy and then we will discuss a use case wherein the users coming from external network, that means the authentication requests that are coming through ADFS proxy, for those kind of authentication requests, user will get prompted for MFA. Whereas if the user is directly contacting your ADFS server, he or she should not be prompted for MFA. Now let's talk about the setup and installation prerequisites, what I'm going to use in this particular lab. So I'm going to use a Windows Server 2016 machine and the role that I will be installing will be remote access role. And the sub option that I will be selecting will be web application proxy. Now, Port 443 has to be open between ADFS and ADFS proxy for both inbound and outbound connectivity. Now the reason behind this is that if you get the dump of all the endpoints of your ADFS, most of the endpoints are secured through HTTPS. So that's the reason why port 443 should be enabled between ADFS and ADFS proxy. Now since the communication between ADFS proxy and ADFS is secure communication. So you need a SSL certificate to set up ADFS proxy trust as well. Now the reason behind this is any client that is coming from external network has to access a particular endpoint of your ADFS, which is published on ADFS proxy. Now there is one more thing which we have to take care of and that is make sure that the SSL certificate that you are using to set up ADFS proxy trust should be a public SSL cert. But in our case, since this is a lab demo environment, what I'll do is I'll copy the certificate from ADFS console and we'll use the same certificate on ADFS proxy server as well. The last thing that you need to know is that you require local admin credential of your ADFS server or the domain admin credential of the domain where ADFS exists. Now let's talk about the steps that we'll take to get this lab configured. The very first thing that we'll do is we'll export the SSL certificate from our ADFS machine and we'll use the same certificate to set up ADFS proxy trust. But in your case, you can use a different certificate, but you have to make sure that the certificate that you are using, you must have the private key of that particular certificate. Then we'll install a remote access role. And the last thing that we will do is the authentication check when the request is directly reaching ADFS and what will be the behavior for the user if the request is coming through proxy. Now let me switch to my ADFS machine so that we can proceed with the certificate configuration. Now, before I proceed with the certificate configuration, what I would like to show you guys is the endpoint section. Now, if you remember in, in my last video, I have mentioned that you have the privilege to enable or disable any endpoint on ADFS or ADFS proxy. So likewise, this first endpoint, which is getting listed here is ADFS LS, and I'm getting the option of enable on proxy or disable. If I'll click on disable, this endpoint will get disabled for your ADFS. And if I'll click on enable on proxy, this means that currently this endpoint is disabled for proxy. But the moment I will click on enable on proxy, now this endpoint is enabled for both ADFS and ADFS proxy. Now, there is one more thing which I would like to suggest here, and that is instead of making changes or enabling or disabling endpoints what i would recommend you is try to create more custom rules in fact 
conditional access rules for your ADFS. That's for 2016. It is called access control policies, which you can find it here. If you'll navigate to any of the relying party, you'll get this option listed. And here you can create different sort of combinations. So right now, the role that I have created, it says permit everyone and require MFA for extranet access. That means when the request will come from proxy, the users will get prompted for MFA. Now, instead of enabling and disabling endpoints, why I suggested you to make changes in access control policies, because since the ADFS has the capability to generate different sort of tokens that means for every relying party you can actually customize what kind of claims are being sent but that is something which is not the same with endpoints because if you will enable or disable any endpoint that will impact adfs as a service so what do i mean by this that you cannot have a configuration wherein a specific endpoint should be available for one application and it should not work for the rest of the application if you are enabling an endpoint that will be available to all the applications and if you are disabling an endpoint that will also get disabled for all the applications now let's proceed to the step wherein we have to copy the ssl certificate so the first certificate that is getting listed here as service communication is actually the ssl cert that we have used initially to set up ADFS so I have opened the certificate and now what I'll do is I'll click on details and then I will click on copy to file on this console I'm simply clicking on next and as I said before that you need the private key of the SSL certificate in order to establish the trust between ADFS proxy and ADFS so I'm selecting this option which says yes export the private key and I'll click on next I'm not going to make any changes here. I'll simply click on next. Now I will give a simple password and I'll again click on next. I'll name this file as ADFS SSL proxy because I'm using it for ADFS proxy and I'll click on save. I'll click on next now and finish. That's all. The export is successful now and I'll go to my location where the certificate is saved now I'll copy this certificate and I'll go to my machine wherein I have to install ADFS proxy role so this is my machine it's a work group machine and here I will be installing ADFS proxy and I'm just going to paste this particular certificate now there is one more thing which we have to check and that is that make sure this machine can contact your ADFS server so what I'll do is I'll just try to ping the Federation service name or the host name of my ADFS server and see whether this machine can communicate with my ADFS or not okay so now what I'll do is I'll just import the certificate in local machine context. I'll click on next, next, and I will give in uh, my password. And here you can leave this uh, field unchecked, which says mark this key as exportable. And I'll click on next. If you want, you can manually navigate to this location called personal. And then I'll click on next, finish. That's it. The import is successful now. And if I go to the certificate section of my local machine, what I'll find is the certificate getting listed. So now we'll proceed with the installation of a remote access role. And for that, I have launched server manager. I'm going to click on manage and then I'll click on add roles and features. Now here, I'm not going to make any change and I'll click on next. It is showing the server where this particular role will be installed ADFS proxy is the host name of this machine and this is the IP of this machine and I'll click on next from this list where it says select one or more role to be installed on the server I'm going to select remote access and then I'll click on next now I'm not going to select any option from here and I'll again click on next next 
and as you can see now I'm getting three options direct access and VPN RAS routing and web application proxy this is the option which we have to select which says web application proxy now we are installing a role called remote access and this role will help you to proxy all the endpoints of ADFS so that's the reason when you read some of the articles it will be listed as ADFS proxy but since you are using web application proxy as a sub option of remote access to get all the ADFS endpoints published on this particular server so in some of the articles it will be mentioned as ADFS web application proxy but both the terms refer to the same entity and that means this particular server which is actually publishing all the endpoints of ADFS to receive the request from the external network now I'll click on add feature next no changes install that's it now this is showing you the summary of all the options that we have selected and once the remote access role is installed the same console will give you the option to get it configured so now the remote access role is installed and I'm going to click in this option which says open the web application proxy wizard and a new console will open or a new window will open which will help you to get the trust configured now on this particular window I'm just going to click on next and the first option that I'm getting is federation service name so the federation service name for my ADFS is ADFS dot concepts work dot com if you want to check what is the federation service name of your ADFS you can go to ADFS console, right click on ADFS and then click on edit federation service properties and you'll get it from here. ADFS federation service name. Now I'll go back to my proxy and we'll initiate the setup once again. Okay, so now I'm getting prompted for username and password and what it says here that enter the credential of local admin account on the federation server. So the host name of my ADFS is ADFS itself and I'm using the administrator account and then I'm going to type in my password. Now all I have to do is I have to click on next and now I'm getting the prompt to select the certificate that I will be using to establish this trust. Now since in my case or in this lab demo we are using the same certificate so what I will quickly do is I will select my certificate and I'll click on view and then I'll click on details and I'll quickly check the thumbprint it ends up with 8365 and now if I go back to my ADFS server and I will try to check the thumbprint of my SSL certificate which is on ADFS it should match with the same thumbprint and that is 8365 that means we have selected the correct certificate i'll click on ok and i'll click on next that's all you can copy this if you want this is the powershell command which will help you to get this role installed now i'll click on configure it will take a couple of minutes for this trust to be established but once this trust is established the same console or the same window will give you an acknowledgement likewise web application proxy was configured successfully now the moment I'll click on close a new window will open up and that will be for remote access and management console now what this window will do is it will actually let you know what is the current operational status of ADFS proxy trust or whether it is working fine or not so right now ADFS proxy trust is established between ADFS proxy that means this server and my ADFS server now we'll move on with the next step of checking a use case wherein what I'll do is from my client machine I'll send authentication request directly to my ADFS and the users will not get prompted for MFA and then I'll try to route that request through ADFS proxy and the users will get prompted for MFA so now I'm going to switch to my client machine and this is my client machine it's a Windows 10 PC and 
I have added a host file entry on this client machine so that the authentication request should go to my ADFS server directly. Now I'll open the claims extra tool and we'll try to authenticate and let's see whether we are getting prompted for MFA or not. So I'm going to select the same set of options and I'll click on force fresh authentication and then I'll click on test authentication. I'm getting prompted to enter my credential and here I'm going to enter my credential and let's see whether I'm getting prompted for MFA or not. As you can see, I'm not getting prompted for MFA. Now what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll change the host file entry of this machine to contact ADFS proxy. I'm not going to close this particular window because we'll match the section which says Authn method providers. That means what kind of authentication has been done by the user. So now I'm going to change the IP here and I'm just going to quickly flush the DNS so that this machine should not go to my ADFS and it should go to proxy. And then I think uh, for sure we will get prompted for MFA. So now I'll go back to my claims x-ray tool and I'll click on test authentication and I will again enter the same username and password and let's see whether I'll get prompted for MFA or not. This will take some time because uh, as per our configuration, the request has to be completed by Azure. So as you can see, it's showing that a text message has been sent and I have received the text message and I will quickly type in my code and I'll click on sign in. Now we will get one more value listed here and that will be Azure. MFA authentication. Now, the request that is coming from external network is getting prompted for MFA and the request which is directly reaching your ADFS is not getting prompted for MFA. This is because on ADFS, what we have actually done is we have created an access control policy on the relying party which says permit everyone and require MFA from external access. So this is the access control policy because of which the users that are coming through ADFS proxy or the external request are getting prompted for MFA. So this was all about what is ADFS proxy. Let's talk about a quick summary. So in this video, we have discussed ADFS proxy and how you can create ADFS proxy trust. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the claim rules of ADFS server and the entire claim pipeline, how a claim is queried and how it is issued to a specific relying party. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time. If you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any question, feedback or suggestion, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time. Bye bye.